Many people believe that Taiwan will be the issue that will trigger a conflict in the South China Sea. As the Philippines' territorial dispute unfolds, I am much more inclined to think that Taiwan won't be that. It will be the Philippines. Hi guys, hello and welcome to another video. First, let us check that we agree on something. For a moment, please imagine that you as your siblings inherit some land and before it is divided and adjudicated by a court, your brother starts to build a house on it. How would you feel about that? Now, I want you to remember that answer because the Philippines, China, and several other countries have a disagreement over who owns the second Thomas Shoal in the South China Sea. In 1999, the Philippines grounded a ship there, the Sierra Madre, to claim the area as part of their exclusive economic zone, or EEZ. They maintained a small military contingent on the ship and are currently trying to build barracks on the shoal. Now, it is important to understand the distinction between an EEZ and sovereign territory. Sovereign territory refers to land, in this case, the shoal, and airspace over which a country has complete control. This includes the ability to make laws, control who enters and leaves, and defend that territory. On the other hand, an EEZ, or Exclusive Economic Zone, is an area of ocean extending 200 nautical miles from a country's coastline, which grants a country exclusive rights to explore and use resources within the zone. It's normal for EEZs to overlap in many cases, particularly in the South China Sea. There are many countries which have overlapping EEZs. Ships and aircrafts from other countries can still travel freely through the EEZ. Most importantly, and this is what we need to remember, is that an EEZ does not grant full sovereignty over the territory itself. China, as one would expect, disagrees with the Philippines and says that since they and other countries have a claim to the shoal, the shoal should remain untouched until the dispute is settled. Xi Jinping himself has said that probably they won't be settled even in their lifetimes, but such is the situation. They would like it to be untouched. Unfortunately, since 2023, tensions have been rising as China's Coast Guard has become more assertive in trying to stop the Philippines from building these barracks where the Sierra Madre was illegally grounded. This includes using water cannons and lasers against Philippine ships that are bringing construction materials to the reef. In a significant development to the situation, China has recently provided evidence that Philippines President Joseph Estrada promised to remove the ship shortly after it ran aground in 1999. Let's watch here. When uh, we grounded that ship there in Ayungin, that we promised now to uh, pull it out. In fact, he said, we, they, they offered to help us. And I asked him, how how sure are you that, that what you're talking is true? And he said, because I was here. Ambassador Huang said that he was here as a junior staff in 1999, not in the time that the uh, incident happened. China also claims that the president, Benigno Aquino III, was reminded several times of that commitment, yet they claim that technical difficulties prevented them from removing the Sierra Madre to what China offered to help and give assistance, and they declined, as you saw in that video. It is important to know that the shoal has really very little value in terms of what can be built on it. There is really no room for anything that would provide any significant logistical advantage or, or military advantage or economical advantage. The Philippine claims they simply want to fortify this dilapidated vessel. So the question now is and has been for a while, what is the point of doing all this? What is the point of disrupting peace in the South China Sea. What would come of it? But perhaps more worrying is the question, what would happen if someone dies and it is considered an act of war? I don't want to think that. But late last month, a Filipino sailor lost a finger in a very unfortunate accident where CCG was attempting to stop resupplying boats from reaching the Sierra Madre. And on July 1st, just a couple of days ago, Jay Tariela from the Philippine Coast Guard reported that a Filipino fishing boat had an engine explode and that the Chinese Coast Guard obstructed and hindered 
efforts to rescue them by deploying two rigid hull inflatable boats to block their path. Now, unfortunately for Mr. Tariella, this version of events is in complete contradiction with that of his own hierarchical superior, Rear Admiral Armando Balilo, the official spokesperson of the Philippines Coast Guard. In this article from the Manila Bulletin, Balilo confirms that the Chinese Coast Guard launched their two rigid hull inflatable boats and offered help to the half-submerged Filipino fishing boat, adding that during rescue operations it is important to save lives. There is a need to communicate and set aside differences, especially when it comes to territorial disputes. So, very far from seeking to obstruct and hinder the rescue operations, like Tariela said, China actually launched its inflatable boats to help out in the rescue. There is absolutely no doubt about that. So, it becomes especially disgusting of Tariela to transform an attempt to set aside differences for the purpose of saving the lives of drowning Filipino fishermen into a PR opportunity to increase tensions in the region. At the behest of who? Hmm, we shall find out in a moment. And it is particularly concerning that some people in the Philippines Armed Forces will use any opportunity to lie in an egregious way to damage China's image and increase tensions. And yesterday, it was reported that a Chinese national and a Chinese American, both executives working in medical industry, had traveled together on June 20th of this year on a business trip to the Philippines, where they were subsequently kidnapped. The wife of one of the victims received a ransom demand for 5 million RMB, or $687,000, which was negotiated down to 3 million yuan and then paid. Despite this, both executives were still killed by the kidnappers who disappeared with the money. This is now the third kidnapping case involving Chinese nationals in the Philippines over the last year alone. These kind of stories are not going to help to improve relations with the Philippines. The popular sentiment both in the Philippines and in China is changing. You can feel it. And this does not bode well for the region. My conclusion is very simple. Bongbong Marcos is the perfect puppet, much a la Zelensky, who has much to gain from doing the U.S. bid in the region, and whatever loss comes to the Philippines, he knows he's got a way out, living in exile in the U.S. That is why Philippines would be the trigger to a hot conflict in the South China Sea, if there ever is one. Chinese traditional filial piety tells us that the last thing China wants is a war with Taiwan. But when the spark is ignited in the Philippines, Japan, South Korea, and those Marines in Taiwan will quickly get into action. All for what? For a dilapidated vessel? You know that that is not the answer. The reason NATO is going to meet in Washington next week is to find an excuse. In this particular case, the South China Sea disputes and the skirmishes that it has entailed to be able to shift to Asia and start controlling the region militarily. Mark my words and check this channel next week to discuss the steps that will be taken during that meeting in Washington and the implications to the peace and prosperity of China and Asia. All right, friends, that's all the time I have today. Thank you so much for watching. And remember to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video if you would like to. And until I see you again, take it easy and bye for now.